This is how the Emoji Movie makes me feel. Now let's talk about it. The Emoji Movie takes place inside of a boy's phone, where all of the emojis within their app have a job to make a certain face or be a certain thing. There's also more than one of each emoji, which is really odd. Why would there be more than one? The main character has parents that are the same face, so that means they reproduce? That's really gross. Anyway, Gene, a meh emoji, is on his first day of the job, and he makes a mistake by making the wrong face. He's a bit different from other emojis because he has more than one emotion and can make multiple faces. According to the leader of the emoji, Smiler, that means that he's a malfunction and must be deleted. Before Gene can be deleted, he escapes and comes across the high five emoji. He then teams up with him so he can find a hacker named Jailbreak in the piracy app. That way Gene can fix his malfunction and become a true meh. So they gotta leave the space they're comfortable with to go to other places on the phone. Does that sound familiar to you at all? It turns out that Jailbreak is a girl emoji that wants to get onto the cloud. And she has this alternative look to her that sounds also very familiar. All of this needs to be done before the user of the phone, Alex, wipes his phone at the phone store. He's doing this because the emojis are messing with the other apps on the phone and it's getting him in trouble in class and embarrassing him. These segments with Alex don't last very long and it's very similar to the segments in uh, Inside Out where it was characters within a character. Except with Inside Out, Riley was actually a fleshed out character. With Alex, he's just a blank slate, and I don't remember anything about him other than his love interest, who also has like one line by the way. So the emojis have to get to the cloud through Dropbox. Yes, a real app. And uh, I think like pretty much all the apps that you see in this movie are real, and they're just as cringy to see. There's a Spotify one, an Instagram one, a Just Dance one that has Christina Aguilera voicing a character. One big thing that I don't get about the plot is when they leave the Messenger app, they can just walk to Dropbox. They don't have to go through all these other apps. They can literally just walk around them. So why did they choose to go through them? As far as the characters go, I don't like any of them. They're all pretty weak and very, very forgettable. They try to give Gene this thing where he's special and different. Now that I think about it, that's also very, very familiar. And I think the malfunction thing is like a metaphor for autism or some genetic thing that's passed down because his dad has it too, and it's very, very mishandled. Speaking of being mishandled, Jailbreak, the hacker emoji, is terrible. I thought she was just going to be a copy of Wildstyle from the Lego movie, but no, she's much worse. Jailbreak is the kind of feminist character that people hate. There are some lines that she has in the movie that made me cringe and sink into my seat that they were so bad. In the Lego movie with Wildstyle, there was actually development and a point to her arc. It seems like they were trying to do something like that with Jailbreak, but failed so hard. Gene's friend High Five is probably the most memorable out of the main cast, but he's still just a little bit insufferable. There was one line that he had that I thought could be funny if it was used better. The line was, I'll use my charisma and sense of entitlement to get back on top, or something like that. There's also Smiler, which you can guess by the trailers, is the villain. I mean, come on. There's Poop, voiced by Patrick Stewart, which wasn't in the movie as much as I thought he'd be. But I think that's a good thing, because I don't want to see Patrick Stewart degrade himself that much. There are some other jokes that sort of work, but mostly just fall flat. Like in the piracy app, there are these trolls that are pretty much the internet stereotype of a troll. There's also a Trojan horse that is an actual horse with Trojan warriors inside. And in the beginning of the movie, there's a joke about emoticons and how they are the elderly. But despite those attempts, I never chuckled once during this movie. I actually smiled and chuckled more at the Hotel Transylvania short that played before the movie. And that's mainly because it has that same visual style that Gendy started with it. So yeah, the Emoji Movie wasn't good. I'm sure that's not a surprise. It started with a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes, but it's starting to slowly climb up to a higher percentage. But does it deserve something like 0% positive reviews? Um, 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 uh, um, no. I mean, don't get me wrong, the movie is terrible, it's absolute crap. But it's nothing like Norm of the North. I've seen animated movies that are much worse than this. But it's still definitely in my list for worst movies this year. Also, I see a lot of people saying that people are seeing this movie just to see it ironically or just to see how bad it is, and that's why it's going to do well financially. But no, that's not going to be the reason that it does well. If it is a financial success, it's going to be because of the normies. 
the kids and parents that go to see this and the regular people that only see like two to three movies a year. Sony also pushed advertising for this really hard, so you see it everywhere. No matter how hard a movie is panned, you can't beat mass advertising or the general public. So if you have seen the, the Emoji movie, I can't believe that's actually a thing. Uh, tell me down in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Bye.